eMotion LV1 from Waves is a software mixer designed specifically for live applications, such as front of house, monitor, and broadcast mixing. This tutorial takes you through the steps of getting started with the mixer. It's arranged in the order in which you'll normally do things when you set up for a show. For more details, take a look at the Emotion LV1 user guide, which you can download at waves.com. When mixing live, LV1 runs as part of a sound grid network. This lets you do two things. First, it lets you run lots of plugins at the same time, with very low latency, since the plugin processing is done on a server and not on the same computer running the mixer. Second, it gives you lots of flexibility in setting up and configuring your system. A sound grid network consists of at least four pieces of hardware. A host computer. This is used only for running the application. No audio processing is done here. A sound grid server. At least one sound grid I.O. device. And a sound grid compatible one gigabit ethernet switch. Connect the host computer, the server, and the I.O. devices to the ethernet switch. Use this computer's network port for sound grid only. Don't use it for internet or other networks. Use CAT 5E or CAT 6 cables. This is a typical mixer setup. Here you have one or more on-stage I.O. devices for mics and monitors. There's another I.O. in the FOH for engineer monitoring and PA. The system can be controlled with multi-touch screens, a mouse, or a hardware controller. You can also add an extra computer for playback or recording. Plus, you can add a redundant server. Next, install the Emotion LV1 software. First, create an account at waves.com and register your new products. Once your registration is complete, a product license will be deposited in your license cloud. Download the Waves Central application from waves.com. Use it to download, install, and activate the licenses of the Emotion LV1 Mixer software, along with the plugins you'll be using. Activate your licenses by moving them from your license cloud to your computer or to a USB flash drive. If the host computer where you'll be working is not connected to the internet, you can create an offline installer. Learn more about Waves Central at the waves.com support page. Now, launch Emotion LV1. At the top of the screen is the top bar. This is your basic navigational tool, and it's available all the time. The tabs in the center take you to the six mixer windows. To move a window to another display, tear its tab from the top and drag the detached view to its new location. Among other things, you can use the top bar to access presets and sessions. Save and recall scenes. Activate talkback and clear solos, and select a channel. Use the tabs on the top bar to open the setup window. This is the window you'll use to assign devices and set user preferences. The setup window consists of three pages. First, go to the system inventory page, which is where you assign all the devices on your network. Hardware and software I.O. devices, servers, and control devices are represented in racks. Before you start, make sure that all network devices are connected and powered on. Select the network port on the host computer that's being used by the SoundGrid network. Use the drop-down menu to add or remove devices. I.O. devices are assigned in racks A and B. IOs can be hardware devices or software IOs, such as SoundGrid ACO or Core Audio Drivers. A network master is colored blue. A slave is green. Click the ID button to identify the hardware associated with the device icon. If an icon is red, then the device is in an error state. It may need a firmware update. A blue or red FW button indicates that an update is available. When a device is read in the I.O. device drop-down menu, its firmware is out of date and will be updated automatically when the device is assigned. Click on the gear button to open the device's control panel.
Servers are listed in the Servers rack. You can assign two servers to your host computer, one main and one redundant. Choose a control protocol or type of controller. This will open the device's control panel. You can modify an existing session or build a new one without a server or IOs. To work offline, select Offline Devices in the I.O. rack slot and then assign the virtual I.O. you wish to use to set up your session. All mixer settings, routing, plugins, and presets will be there when the hardware is connected. You can use the preset menu to save your session. The Mixer Settings page sets the basic behavior of the mixer. It controls mixer size, mixer history and startup condition, and delay compensation preferences. The User Interface Settings page controls the behavior of meters and other displays. You can also use it to create shortcut keys. The patch window sets up the routing of audio within the mixer, between the mixer and IOs, and between devices. It's also used to assign delay groups, links, and mute groups. All these routing possibilities mean that you have a huge number of possible patches. To make patching manageable, sources and destinations are filtered based on the purpose of the patch. On the left, you have the Patch View Selector. This selects the categories of channels, buses, or IOs that you'll need to make the patch you want. On top, you've got the grid filters, which you can use to determine which specific I.O. channels, mixer channels, and buses will be available to patch from one point to another. To make a patch, select a patch view and subview. Click on I.O.s to see their channels. Zoom in and out is needed. Click where two channels intersect, or draw in a straight line to select several patches. A valid patch is turquoise. Red indicates a patch to an I.O. that is not available. Rename a channel by double-clicking on its name cell. When patching inputs, signal flows from the I.O.s on the top to the mixer channel inputs on the left. In the input view, you can change a channel from mono to stereo by clicking on its M or LR button. Input sets A and B are patched independent of each other. The output page patches from channel direct outs or mix bus outs to the IOs. There are four output sources per channel or bus. Input, pre-fader, post-fader, post-panner. The device-to-device -device patch page is like a network patch bay. Here, you can connect between all devices assigned to the mixer. Use the internal page to patch mixer channels and buses to groups, mains, and matrix, and control groups such as link DCA and mute groups. Use the delay patch view to assign IOs to delay groups. Patching information is stored as part of a session. Patch possibilities vary according to mixer configuration. Use the show window to manage mixer settings. Mixer settings are organized in two levels, sessions and scenes. A session is the mixer setup for an entire concert or event, while a scene is a snapshot of a song or parts of a song. Sessions contain everything about a particular mixer setup, including all the scenes. You can build a new session based on previous sessions or create one from scratch by loading a blank template. Click on a session to select it. The selected session is always highlighted blue. When the active session is not the selected one, it's highlighted yellow. To load a session that's not shown in the list, click Open and navigate to the session you wish to load. You can also load a template, which is a complete session without any IOs assigned. Select a session and choose Save. This overwrites the current session. Save As creates a new session. Sessions can also be saved and loaded with the preset menu in the top bar. Scenes are organized in a list and can be recalled in a few different ways. By selecting a scene name and clicking Recall. By clicking the left and right arrows. 
or by using the Scenes drop-down menu on the top bar. A scene can also be recalled using an external control device. The Scenes page includes a Scope section for determining which control parameters will change when a scene is recalled. Scope selectors are organized by channel parameters, input channels, and bus channels. RecallSafe prevents a parameter from changing when a scene is recalled, even if the parameter is within the scope of the scene. Use the Channel window to control all parameters of a selected channel. Choose the input source and I.O. channel. Set preamp input, phase, and 48 volt phantom. Adjust the filters. Up to eight plugins can be inserted on any channel or bus. Click on the arrow in a rack slot to choose a plugin. Click the plugin thumbnail icon to open its plugin pane. Adjust plugin parameters. Any plugin that supports LV1 mapping can be assigned to and controlled in the main processing section and in the mixer window. Adjust aux sends. Set send level, source, and pan. Set channel mix and direct outputs. Assign and adjust main outputs. Main stereo mix out. Center and mono. Assign groups, matrix, links, and mute groups. Open the direct window to assign the channel to IOs. And delay groups. Any selected control in the channel window is automatically assigned to the touch and glide slider for easier control of parameters. The mixer window is inspired by traditional mixing consoles. It provides a broad, multi channel view of all mixer controls, routing, plugins, assignments, and channel parameters. The mixer window is organized in layers and layer modes. A mixer layer is a set of channels that are viewed and controlled together. Input channels. Groups. Aux effects and aux monitor. Masters. Links. The all layer lets you see every channel and bus in the session. Each channel has a fader, meter, mute, and cue. Layer modes are used to control channels on the current layer. Each layer mode provides a specific signal flow or processing control. The input layer mode controls input audio. I.O. preamps can be controlled from this mode. The rack layer mode provides a view of the plugins used for an entire layer. You can move or copy plugins from rack to rack or within the same rack. Use the drop down menu to add or change a plugin. The Dynamics EQ mode provides a view and control of the three assigned plugins on the channel. Assignments are made in the channel window plugin pane. There are three aux modes aux effects, aux monitor, and all aux. Adjust sends with the small faders, or use the sends on faders function to control sends with the large faders. On the Subviews section on the left, click the name of the aux channel whose sends you want to adjust. The mixer changes appearance to indicate that the channel faders have flipped their function. The name of the selected aux channel now appears above the master fader. Use the channel fader to adjust the send. The master fader now maps the aux output. The Q button indicates that the EFX or monitor channels are now being sent to the Q bus. To return to normal faders, click on the aux send name, either on the left side of the panel or above the master fader. The channel layer combines the controls of all mixer modes into one view. This is well suited for configurations with one display monitor, since every control you'd see in the channel window is accessible here without leaving the mixer window. In this quick start video, We've looked at some of the most important things you need in order to set up, configure, and begin mixing with the eMotion LV1. To learn more, visit the LV1 page at waves.com. Thanks for watching.